Well, we're out here to frack this well today. We drilled this about a month ago, 605 foot deep, and it makes about 40 gallons of water a day. So it makes very, very little water. But before we hydrofrack it, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an understanding about the, uh, the area where we're at. And um, since the well's probably gonna be so tight, I figured I might as well frack it. Um, I expect pretty high pressures on this one. And uh, right now we've got the packer down at 100 foot. Now a quick backstory on this, when the customer bought this property prior to us drilling the well or getting a permit or anything like that, he knew that there were uh, wells on the property. So um, I'm going to take you to the well that he originally tried to use, that's why you can see here he has the trench going all the way to that well. Now um, upon us drilling the well a few months later we were told that there were actually three wells that were out here on this little peninsula of land this little triangular corner um, I'm gonna say we've got maybe a 250 square foot area here um, in this corner so this was the well that they were originally going to try to use um, that is six inch casing so it's probably drilled in the 80s but apparently it's only like 82 foot deep or something like that and the other wells out here are the older cable machine style wells so we already know that those wells are less than 100 feet um, his expectation was that this well would provide water that's why he had trenched it all the way in um, they put a pump in the well it ran for about 15 minutes and then it ran dry so the well makes literally no water um, I think the next day it made like seven feet of water. So what is that? Ten gallons in 12 hours? Um, kind of similar to our deep 600 foot hole that is 150 feet at the end of this trench. So I believe that's kind of why he wanted us to drill there was because it was near where he had already trenched his water line into. And it would be very easy for him to tap into the system. As somebody who wants to do the majority of the work themselves, which I applaud him for that. But we didn't know that there were multiple wells out here that didn't make water. Um, you know, we kind of get hurt in a situation like that when we don't find water as a well driller. Um, you know, we don't like that. We like to provide what service we are providing to give the customer what they need. But unfortunately, we're at the mercy of Mother Nature. We can't guarantee quality of the water or the quantity of the water. So that's why we have hydrofracking. It went from 1,700 or 800 down to 
to 1,000 PSI. Dad's going to inspect the other well, making sure that we are not pushing our frack water out of the old well. There was a reason why I set our packer at 100 foot, because my expectation was that all of the old wells were no deeper than 100 foot, so we wouldn't have any issue with that. Tank is basically empty, it's right down there. We've, in, we've exhausted all of our water. It's time to let it come back. You gotta take the pressure off the system. Let it sit there and screen. Girl's hot. Woo wee. It has been one hot day, guys. One hot day. Well, the frack's all over, and it looks like we've got a considerable, considerable flow back. That is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 
So right now we're not dumping any water into the well. This is just the water we pressurized into the well, into the vein down in the ground. And the vein is pushing the water back at that rate. Now that's not to say that that's gonna be the natural flow rate because it's under pressure. But under pressure, it's still flowing probably six or eight gallons a minute. Impressive. The true test will be when they put a 400 foot pump in this thing and try to use it like normal and see if they can drain it dry.